right now in the turbulent times, it can be very, very challenging. And, and challenging is probably an understatement to express exactly what it is that we need to get past this, to grow from this. The situation as it pertains to race, racism, race identity, how it affects communities, the community as a whole, individual communities, and everything in between is a very, very heavy and deep conversation that we get to have, that we need to have. Because whether you like it or not, it's not going anywhere until we lean into this. And I'm talking specifically now to the men. Most of the times we dictate the energy in our household, in our businesses, when we go to work. And so it's so important that we embrace this opportunity right now to carry a different energy into those spaces, even though it's going to be challenging. That's the point of actually leveling up and being the best version of you every single day. And right now, in this moment, is the time where that is the opportunity to do that. It's the opportunity to build on your character and build on that man. And I'm, the best way I can do this by talking into perspective and why perspective is so important while you're trying to get your message across. Whatever message that you want to put in out there, whatever goal you like to get out of this, understand that while you are trying to be heard, someone else is also trying to be heard. So at some point in time, someone needs to listen. And can you be that man to be the one to listen first? Can you be that person to really listen, not hear to react, but really listen? Because I'm going to tell you a story about when I wasn't. I was the man who was hearing just to react. And it wreaked havoc on my relationship with family members. And this all happened right around when Trump was going to the office. As I mentioned before, I'm multiracial. I'm black and white. So I have the white side of my family, which is on my mom's side. And the black side of my, black side of my family comes from my dad's side. And if you remember, especially if you guys in the United States, when Trump was coming into office, there's a lot of things coming up in the, uh, the alt-right community, a lot of things come around Black Lives Matters and all this information about race relations and Trump is a race and all these different things. And so it was very, very tense. Well, my cousins, I had a couple of cousins who were Trump supporters and they had shared some information and shared some memes that to me were completely offensive and really a lack of respect for me as a person of color and my family. And I took it upon myself to uh, share my perspective on that, to get them to see that what they were sharing wasn't actually factually correct. Now, when I didn't get the reception that I wanted, because I was in my, in my mind, I thought, okay, right, I'll come into this, I'll step into the conversation, relax, and I'll just give the facts, and I'll keep my emotions out of it, and they'll see it, because that's the way it works, right? You give facts, and people accept your facts, and that's just the way life is. <laughs> right, didn't go that way. So when I didn't really get the feedback, the response that I was looking for, I took it as they didn't care about me. I took it as they were rejecting me. I took it as that they didn't see me. I took it as they were not trying to hear me. And from that point forward, I made it about me. And I can tell you never once, never once did I consider their perspective, their point of view, their reality, their experience, not once. And why didn't I do it? I should have known better, right? You understand how relationships work and how people like to be communicated with. But you know what? I was hurt. I was seeing images. I was reading texts that offended me, that made me frightful that my family would share such things. I thought, well, hell, I don't know how many experiences they have with black people, but surely I'd imagine the experience they've, they've had with me, with my father, with my brothers has been positive. So their personal experiences have been far well, um, far greater positive than negative. I think, the way they speak to me, the way, the way we get together. So because I zeroed in just on that fact from my perspective, I created their reality. I didn't consider anything else. I have no idea what they went through, what they see, who they're around, who they're influenced by, because let's be honest here. Let's get really honest and real that we are all influenced by something. Until we actually take the time to stop and analyze why we think the way we do, why we feel the way we do about a certain something, we're all, we all have been programmed to act in a certain way. And so I kept pushing back and my language got more aggressive. It got more frustrated. It got more condescending. I was belittling them. I was challenging their intelligence because why? I need to feel good because I felt threatened. And again, all the while, although I was pushing why it is that they need to listen, why it's so clear the facts that I was sharing are so obvious, they weren't hearing me because I made it about me. I made it about me. And at the end of the day, this is where we're at right now. The conversation has to happen. 
And we need to be in a position to listen. We need to be in a position to listen, to want to understand that perspective. And that doesn't mean that the actions that someone else is taking means that you condone them. You can be compassionate and hold someone accountable for their actions. You can be empathetic with their life, with their reality, and also be in disagreement. You can be uh, empathetic to what they're going through and not like how they show up as a person. That's okay. But if we can give ourselves the opportunity to put ourselves in that perspective and to understand why that person feels or thinks the way they think, we can get so much more done. And guys, it will not be a quick fix. Okay, so get that out of your mind right now. Everything that we've been um, indoctrinated with, everything that we see, this goes deep. This is not a quick fix. But that's also the beautiful part of this, is none of us have just popped into who who we are today. We've had experiences that made us who we are today. We have different things in life. We've gone through years, decades now, creating who we are today. So to think that we are just going to get it in one moment, it's not going to happen that way. So to keep this conversation going, I want you to embrace the challenge that is the dialogue. Embrace the discomfort that's going to come up because people are going to say shit to you you're not going to like. People are going to say things to you that are going to hurt you. People are going to say things to you that you're going to say, how do you even come up with that? They have their same reality the same way you do, the same way I do. And that doesn't mean allow yourself to be walked on or be disrespected. That's not what it means. What it does mean is can you take a deep breath and not take it personal and see that that person is scared? Can you take a deep breath, relax your shoulders, relax your jaw, and actually change your body and receive what that person is saying? Can you actually let that person get that frustration out and see them as a person? And then ask again, how are you? What is it that you want to tell me? What is it that I don't know about your situation to understand? To think that we're going to find ourselves in a one-size-fit-all society is not going to be that possible. However, I think the one-size-fit-all that we can aspire to is respect and to be able to put ourselves in the position of somebody else. Because as long as we can do that, we don't have to necessarily agree with how or why they do things. We can actually understand where they're coming from. Then the conversation goes. Then we can actually be a different person. We can be a man that's going to carry different energy into our homes, into different tense spaces, into our work lives, into conversations that have to happen. But as soon as we try to shut the other person down because we don't like what they're saying, the conversation's done. And so is that big dream that we have.